Hi there, this is Steven again, and I'm going to show you in this video how to do some simple animation just using this swinging pendulum, which is a typical exercise for some entry level animation, kind of getting the idea of a couple different principles of animation. I'm in Adobe Animate, and I've created a some shapes to represent my pendulum. And this is just for the purposes of this. It is suspended from a rod or some cable that doesn't flex. Kind of important because if it flexes, it's gonna do something different, kind of uh, throwing a wave into it like a, uh, like a tail wag or something like that. So I've already created these shapes. And you can tell that I created all these on multiple layers, but right now you can't really see them. And I'm gonna show you a couple tips to kind of get this right is you have to kind of pull this panel up. It sometimes shows you on the mouse that you got to kind of click right in there in between the main kind of viewer, the stage or scene, and then pull this panel up, which is the separator for the timeline to kind of see everything. And you can kind of pull it way up. You can also kind of drag it out and sort of undock it if you want to kind of, you know, have it floating above if you want to do something like that. If you have two, two monitors, you can bring it over to the other monitor, or you can kind of dock it back down here. So that's kind of a quick little tip there. The other thing is, normally by default, uh, in the new Animate 2020, it makes this sort of preview, which is kind of nice, but it takes up a lot of real estate. Unless you have dual monitors, you know, you can bring that over. So you can see with just a few layers, it takes up a lot of real estate. So real quickly, you can go over here and you can set it to standard and it makes them a lot smaller. This is kind of the old method that Flash and Adobe Animate had. I don't need, necessarily need to see the preview. If you want and you, using a separate monitor, you can totally do that. The other thing is this right here, this short, medium, tall. If you notice when I do that, what it's doing is it's actually giving more space to each one of my layers. I opt for short because I, I don't really need, I just need to see the label and kind of the, the keyframe there. And then if you want, you can even do a preview in context, which kind of shows you where you're at. But I prefer, you know, the short and the standard. That way I just, just can see the keyframes, right? Uh, there's a, a couple other options in here, but that's kind of the basis. The other thing is this is your timeline. Just real quick, if you don't know uh, a lot about Adobe Animate, this is your timeline. These are all the frame numbers. Uh, it's at 30 frames per second. If you look at the document, you can kind of tell it's at 30 frames per second. So one at one second, it's 30 frames, two seconds, 60 frames, three seconds, 90 frames. So on and on and on. So for my animation, I'm actually gonna scale this up a little bit so I can kind of see a little bit more because I'm gonna have my animation go to 150 frames and I'll kind of talk about that once I get it get to that point. But that way I can kind of scale this down a little bit to get that in view. If you're just doing a few frames, you can scale it up or down, right? So that's kind of the basis of that. Cool, uh, so I have the, all this set. Uh, I'm gonna create a motion tweened animation because this is gonna be a simple animation. I don't need to need, have the shapes morph. And so if you're doing a shape tween or shape animation, that's when you, you, know, you can choose a different animation style if you wanna see things morph or change shape. In this case, I'm just going to be pivoting it and rotating it, and it's pretty simple. So all I need to do is a motion tween. There is, in this version of Animate, there's a classic tween, and I don't use that anymore. I think it's sort of compatible with older versions. There's a lot more ability and control when you're doing the, the motion tween. So if you look at this, I can't just motion tween one of these shapes. If I do, it's going to convert it to a symbol. So if I try to right click here and create a motion tween, which is usually the, the process, it's going to give me this warning. The selected item cannot be tweened. You must convert it to a symbol. This is normal, right? So you can click OK. You can say don't do that again. Or you can convert it to a symbol first. I'm going to click cancel because uh, I'm going to convert these to a symbol on my own. Realize that when I convert, I can't convert all these layers to the same layers in a symbol, if I've drawn them on the main timeline and not in a symbol itself, then I have to convert the, all this to a symbol. And when I do, it's going to take all these layers away. So I'll kind of show you that really quickly. If I, you know, hold down shift and I right click and I go down and say convert to symbol. It says symbol one. It says it's a graphic. I'm not going to worry about this right now to change it. I have a future video that I'll talk about the differences in symbols, but right now I'm just going to call it can you um, shape. I'll do it that way. And then I'll click OK. 
So that is now all a symbol. And if I double click on that, you see it says Pendulum Shapes, Create Shapes. is it, That's my scene name. I renamed it from scene one. It says Pendulum Shapes, but you see it's all layer one now, right? It all condensed it all down one layer. If all, that's all you want, that's all you need, that's fine. But what you can do is if I go back to Create Shapes, I'm going to undo until I get that symbol away. All right. So... There we go. Undid until I got the, all these shapes back and it's no longer a symbol. So what I can do is I can go to this top one and I'm going to right click and I'm going to convert it to a symbol. Right? And then same process. Pendulum and I'll call it start. Pendulum start. A couple other things that I want to mention about this is start your pendulum. If you're going to do this pendulum, start your pendulum straight up and down. Don't put it at an angle. The reason why is not that it's going to be the start point, but the reason why is I want this to be straight up and down. So when I rotate it, my values are going to start where this is zero. And it'll make sense when I get further down to this. But don't start it up at an angle like here. Like even if I want my pendulum to start here, this is sort of the default position of my pendulum. So I just created this as a symbol. I'm going to select all these. I just selected one and then shift selected. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to copy layers. Then I want to go into the symbol that I created right here. And I'm going to double click on it. And you can see it's this pendulum start. That's the name I gave it. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to paste layers. Right? And now what it did, sometimes it'll move it off. That's OK. Or I could go back and, and change that, but that's OK. Uh, with it all selected, I'm just going to kind of drag it back, uh, drag it where I need to drag it. There we go. Uh, I can get closer. I'm going to just zoom in really quick and get that as close as I can get it. Whoop. <laughs> okay, there we go. That should be it. And I'll go out. Let me just fit to window. There we go. And you'll see layer one is still there, but layer one should be up here. That was that first layer that I pasted in or that I uh, made the symbol first. And now I've got all the layers in there, which is kind of what I want. If I want to modify anything, I can do that. So I'm going to go back to the create shapes. That's the scene. That's the main scene. I'm in this symbol called pendulum start. And now what I can do is I, I'm not ready to ex exactly start animating it, but there's a couple things that I need to do. First, uh, you'll notice my toolbar by default, it's docked over here. And I always don't like that when you first start up animate and you sort of have the default uh, workspaces, this is docked. So I always like to pull it over here and kind of open this up a little bit. I like my tool, that toolbox to be floating because I use this quite a lot. And then I can modify it. If you haven't already seen my video where I can kind of do this, I can actually drag different tools over. I can even drag these out because I like these being separate. I also like having the pen tool over here, so I'm going to do that. I have mul all these sim symbols still here. So uh, remember I converted one, and if you look at this, when I select them, I'm going to go to the selection tool. When I select them, you can kind of see these are still shapes, but I copied the shapes and I put them inside the symbol. So that one has the symbol now. So I can just go ahead and get rid of these, right? It's easier if you start you know, your, your project with a symbol first, but that's okay. I'm showing you kind of one way that you can make them on your main timeline and then convert them to a symbol. And I'm just going to call this pendulum. Right. So I know that this is now my pendulum. So I'm going to go to, I have to do this from the free transform tool, but see this, this is where the pivot point is, right? It, it's for the transform. So if I transform, it's always going to go to that center pivot. But all I'm doing is I'm selecting that pivot point and I'm moving it up where this should pivot from. And I want it to swing from pretty much the very top. And I want it to be as centered as possible. So I'm going to put it about right there because that looks like a good point that it would rotate from, right? If it's way out here or way out here or way down here, it's going to look weird because this is going to rotate that way and the rest is going to rotate this way. If I rotate it, you're going to see where it rotates from. So I want, I want it to be sort of up here 
so that if I rotate it, it's going to do that. And I'm undoing once I rotate it so I can keep it in its position. Now I'm going to go back out. I'm going to go fit to window. So after I've set my pivot point, what I want to do before I can really start animating is I need to tell it, this is sort of my process, is you need to tell it how many frames you want to go to. Now you can always change this. It's not like you're set in stone, but I'm going to make my animation 150 frames. So it's five seconds long, right? I want to give it that much time because I'm going to have it swing back and forth three times. So before I st can start doing any kind of animation, I need to add those frames because right now I only have one frame and I can't do any animation with one frame. So I need to choose a frame where I want it to end at. Now I can right click here and insert a frame or insert a blank keyframe right there on the first one. But I also have this button right here. If I press and hold, it says keyframe, blank keyframe or frame. I'm going to set it to blank frame or just to frame, right? Because I want it to be, I'm, when I press that button, I want it to be just frame. You can change it for whatever you want, but that's going to set an end frame. If you right click and right click and insert keyframe or blank keyframe, either one, it's going to add a new keyframe and this is going to be a new span. Like this is a whole different animation than this. It basically duplicated the symbol and is ready for you to do a different animation, which is not what I want for this. The same thing here, if I set it to keyframe or blank keyframe, when I press that button, it's going to insert a keyframe like that, which is not what I want at this point in time. All right, so I just went and undid that. So I'm going to click on that. What I want it to do is insert a, a, a frame, right? And when I did that, obviously, it, it added another one. So if I want to get rid of it, I can right click there and remove frames. So it removed that, just that one. So now I got it going all the way just to 150 frames. All right, the next thing I want to do is right click on this and create motion tween, not classic tween, but motion tween. The reason why is I have some very specific ideas of what I want to do here. Now, on a motion tween, the nice thing is when you, you know, scroll down, if you make any movements, it's going to create a keyframe. It's going to put down a frame where it's, it's an extreme and it's going to come up with all the in-between. So if I move this from here, from this frame, from frame one, all the way down to frame 150 and then reposition this, it's going to animate from one to the next. So I'm starting on frame one. I select my pendulum. I could rotate it using this tool, right, the free transform tool, or what I can do is I can select this transform panel. If you've never seen this, that it looks almost like the free transform tool. But if I select that, it's going to open up this transform panel. Uh, normally, it's there by default. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab it from the tab and pull it off over here so I can kind of have it always open and, you know, floating above my stage or my scene. I can select, click down where the value is and drag, and it's going to actually reposition that. I can just switch to the selection tool, sub-selection tool, just kind of keep that transform uh, tool off of there. But I can rotate this and I'm going to go to about 66. I don't want to go, you know, higher than my stage going out of the scene, but I'm going to go up pretty high. I'm not going to go 90 degrees, but I'm going to go up, you know, like right here, let's say, go to 70 degrees or maybe 68, let's see. And then I can, if I click into that, I can type in 68, right? And then I'm going to go a few uh, frames down. And what I want to do actually is I want it to end up on this frame. And I'm going to go to the end and do that. But I'm going to go down a few frames. Let's go just to, you know, one second, for example. And in one second, I'm going to have it rotate to the other side. So when I go to this side, you're going to see it's a negative value. That's because I started the pendulum in the middle, which is zero. So the positive value goes this way, the negative value goes this way, right? So it's always starting at zero. And if you think about it, it's like it is uh, 360 degrees. It's like going a full circle. Starting at zero, it'd come all the way around and go to 360. So I'm having it back, I'm going this direction, which is a positive value, right? When I go this direction, it's a, it, that's the positive value, you see. Once I hit zero, it starts to go into the negative value. So I'm gonna type in, negative 68 and hit enter. Now, eventually I'm going to change this so the values aren't the same because I'm going to have it lose energy. But in this first video, I'm just showing how to move it back and forth, right? Now, once I have those two, one of the cool things you can do, I'm, I, you can kind of see this, it just goes one way and then back, or not yet back the other way. So what I can do is I can hold down option and I can click and drag this first frame. Sometimes the first frame is a little tricky and I'm going to drag that to frame 60. And what that's doing is it's duplicating the value and, and basically holding that value or holding that 
position and then duplicating it for this frame. So now I have a full cycle and now I can do the same thing with this one. I option drag that say to frame 90 and then I select this one and option drag that to frame 120. And now I've got it going back and forth. So that goes one way, back the other way, back the previous way, and then back the other way. And now you'll see that it kind of stops here because I want to do something kind of interesting. I'm going to grab this, which should be the same as this, and I'm going to option drag that to the end, right, to 150. But what I want to do, because this would look weird that it just pauses, so I went this way, this way, this way, this way. Right? So what I'm going to do, I want to scale these down because I need another one in here, but I want it to be the same rate. I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to click. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this down till it gets to about 120. And then I can go back up to 150, right click and insert a frame. So that's one way that you can retime things. But I want to drag this keyframe all the way to 150 because I want that one. It's the same as the start, right? So when I loop my animation, it's going to be... It's just going to go back and forth. Eventually, I'm going to change this, but uh, for right now, I'm going to have it loop. So now I have this one as the first frame, goes to that side, goes back, goes back, goes back. And now I'm going to grab this one, and I'm going to option again, option drag this one to about there, right? And now what I want to do is I want to figure out, you know, where these should be. So I'm going to choose 25. I can just click and drag these over. So that one's 50, that one's 75, this one's 100, right? And I just made it easier on myself because I, I figured that I was going to go to 150. And then I've got this one, this one should be at 125, right? To just get equal spacing. Now, eventually I wanted to lose energy, but to get this, just to get the idea of it kind of swinging back and forth, this is what I did, right? And I'm going to set this, if you click here, it's going to set it to loop. Whoop. <laughs> and you have to kind of spread when you click loop, it selects a range and I have to click up here and drag to the entire range. And then I'm going to go ahead and play. And it loops back and forth. It goes back and forth and back and forth. Right. And then when it gets to the end, it loops back and, and, re and finishes. Right? It is kind of duplicating that frame, but that's okay for right now. I get it. I get it going and it's moving back and forth. Uh, and that gives us our just first start at uh, providing motion and doing motion in Animate, right? Some very basic, simple motion tweening and some very simple keyframing. And just to remember, like, just when I move this thing, right, if I were to click, if I wanted to adjust where this keyframe was, I could actually select it and I can just move it, right? And then it's going to it's going to reset that key or any other key when I come over here. If I rotate it, it's going to set a new keyframe. So if I don't want one there, I need to undo, right? So in the same here, like once I got to that key, right, it set it there. So I need to kind of set it back to where it should be. Or I can again go and option drag that keyframe to here, right? And then that should reset it. So if you get into trouble, that's one way to kind of clear it out, right? And that's it for this stage. And I'll come back and I'll do another video to, to polish it up and make some uh, final touches.